Welcome back. This is God Size Ministries, and I am so happy to be back with um, the continu continuation of the Activate Your Faith series. And so today I have Romans 10, 14 to 17, where I would be teaching on today. So right before I start, I just want to do a quick prayer. Father God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. God, you said we're two or three are gathered in your name. You will be in the midst. Father God, I ask that you would anoint this word right now, God. I pray that you'll be glorified, O oh God. I pray that you wash us clean from anything that is not of you. I pray, O oh God, that you, O oh God, will be glorified and your people be edified. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. And so today we're gonna we're going to be looking into Romans 10, 14, 17. And I want to start from verse 14. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? Verse 15, And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scriptures say, How beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. Verse 17 says, I want to go from verse 16 to verse 17. Verse 17 says, So faith comes from hearing, that is hearing the good news about Christ. Amen? And so, as we can see here, as we are in the continuation of the Activate Your Faith series, um, in verse 14, Romans 10 and verse 14 is saying, how can they call, how, sorry, how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? So, first, in Romans 10 and 14 is saying, how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? First, whether you are a Christian, whether you are a sinner, Romans 10 and 14 is saying, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? So even as we are in this Activate Your Faith series, it first, you know, activate, I mean, your belief and your faith is almost like one-on-one. -on -one. And so how could they believe in him to save them unless they believe in him? The only way a sinner or a Christian can, a sinner, if they want repentance, they have to believe in him first. A Christian, if they're looking for breakthrough or deliverance, they have to believe in him first, right? And so the next, the next um, line said, and how can they believe in him if they've never heard about him? So that means us, we as, uh, as Christians, if we don't go out and begin to tell people about the, the, um, the Jesus Christ, God's son, he died on the cross, rose again for us, for our sins. If we don't go and tell him, the scripture is saying, and how they, how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? So when we are, as Christians, we do not go out and tell others about the love of God, about Jesus' son, and how he, God gave up his son to die for us. How would they even know about him? They have to hear about him first. And so today, let's go to the next verse, the next line. And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? This is the only way they are going to know. So Romans 10 and 14 is telling us full and well what is basically um, a Christian's duty. In order for Christians, I mean sinners, to call upon the Lord, they have to first believe. The second one, if they never heard about him, why are they going to call upon someone who they don't even know? The third one, if you don't go out and tell about the gospel of Jesus Christ, how are they going to hear about him? Those who do not know Christ, those who do not know that God um, gave his only son for them to have eternal life. How are they going to know? Right? And so let us go over to verse 15. And it says, and how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? And this is why so many right now, God is unctioning and, and um, anointing to go out. Because he said, and how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? They have to be sent. God said, go ye into the world and preach the gospel. When you are a part of a ministry, your pastor is supposed to anoint you, like, like push you to go out and tell, and tell others about Jesus Christ. Yes, you are coming into the sheepfold in order to get the knowledge, in order to get the wisdom that you now need to go out and tell others. It's just like a college. You come in, you get that knowledge, and now you go out and do um, that, um, whatever you certified, and you go out and you're certified in hearing the word of God. You're certified in, in the relationship with the spirit. You're certified in knowing that God um, um, sent his only son. These are things that you know. So now, if you know these things, verse 14 said, and how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? 
some people, yes, we think that, okay, the whole world knows, but what if some don't? And this is our, our job to still remind them. If they even know, it's our job to still remind them. Amen? And so verse 50, it says, And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scripture said, How beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. The Bible said, Beautiful are the feet of those who go and carry tidings up, um, for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And so verse 17, which is my base scripture, my, my base verse. So faith comes from hearing, that is hearing the good news about Christ. So in order for you to have faith, how are you going to have faith if you don't even know the word of God? How are you going to have faith if you're not studying the word? How are you going to have faith if you don't hear the preacher preach the word and say, you know what? Um, without without um, faith, I cannot even approach God. Without me believing that he is God, I can't, even, I can't even come to him unless I believe that first he is God and that he exists. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the good news about Christ. How could you come to God if you don't know the good news about Christ? How could you come to God if you don't know his word? So this is why the Bible said, we pray amiss. And I remember being young and not being um, aware of how to pray. So many times I wonder why my prayer wasn't being answered until I read the scripture. Sometimes we pray and we pray amiss. Because why we're praying all sorts of God do this. God do that. What did his word says? What did his word say? His word said, give him back his word. He said, remind him of his word. And also he said, when you come, he said, first you have to bring his word because he said, angels of the Lord, they hearken to the voice of his word. Amen. And so this is all I have for today. You know, um, everything we stand on, it must be the word of God. Must be the word of God. And so, like I say, the angels hearken to the voice of his word and everything we stand on must be the word of God. And so today my verses, um, Hebrews 10, Hebrews 10, for, sorry, verse 17. So faith comes from hearing, that is hearing the good news about Jesus Christ. So if you are not a person who does not know the good news of Jesus Christ, if you do not know the word of God, I am advising you just start to read your word you know, go to a part of a church that, that, that reads and studies the Bible and, and thoroughly. And, you know, because when you come to God, you have to come with his word. And so that is all I have for today. Nothing long. I just want to pray that, you know, your faith will be activated. I pray that um, if you do not know Christ, that you will come to Christ now before it's too late. You know, time is winding down. If you don't know Christ, then I pray that you just ask him simply, Lord, forgive me. God, you know, I know that you're coming. I believe in your son, Jesus Christ. I believe that you have raised him from the dead. I believe I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you know, and he said, you shall be saved. If you believe, if you believe and confess and believe that God has raised Jesus Christ from the dead, Romans 10 and 9, he said, you shall be saved. And so, Father, I just pray for an activation of faith among those who are watching, those who would watch this video. I pray, oh God, an anointing over this video right now. I pray, oh God, that your glory will be revealed, oh God. I pray that those who are waiting for you to move in their life, even as they are activating their faith right now, God, I pray that things will begin to burst, oh God, through the, through the clouds, oh God. Open up the heavens, oh God. Open up the, the windows. Open up doors, oh Father God. Pray, I pray, oh God, that every need will be met right now. I pray, oh God, that they will begin to seek your word and give you back your word, oh God, and stand on your word and trust on your word, Father God. God, I pray that even like the children of Israel, do not let them doubt your word. Do not let them be negative. Do not let them complain, Father, because they would lose the promise, oh Father, as we've seen in, 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 um, when the children of Israel lost because they complained and they were ungrateful, Father. And so God, I pray for a pure heart, oh God, that they would have be able to come before your presence, God. I pray, oh God, that this day, oh God, that you will be blessed and you will go out believing that God is able and throughout this week, you know, just, just be in expectancy, knowing that as you activate your faith, God is going to move on your behalf. And so I want to say thank you for watching and God bless and have a great day and a great week. Goodbye.